Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today we're back with our 1986 Lincoln Ultra Limousine. You guys really enjoyed part one and gave us a ton of suggestions of stupid shit to do with this limo. And now it is time to act on those. Okay, so thank you everyone for watching part one and giving us your suggestions. We have a good list of them picked that we are going to go through and try to do as many as we can. Uh, but step one is to make this thing roadable and not full of poop. So we're going to take it down the car wash right now, get it cleaned up, go through the interior quick with uh, about nine and a half gallons of de-germ and every shop back we own, and then get some new tires on it and start driving it around. Your cherry out the way. It's enjoy the poop. You too, cameraman. Oh. Get, oh. The, get the hell in there. Oh, it's stinky. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's always great. He's really good at drawing squares, isn't he? Oh, not circles, though. <laughs> he needs to work on his shapes. Yeah. Oh, man. To the car wash! Here we go pick up Phoenix first. It's funny how I have to zoom in on you and I'm in the same car. On your right, you'll see Phoenix's powder coating. Oh. So, there's a bed totally surrounded by mirrors on all three sides. Oh my god. Dude, it is built out of scrap metal. I see that. Like, t like look at the tandem axle. It's not a trailer axle. It is someone, some trailer manufacturing scrap pile. Oh my goodness. <laughs> one inch? Yeah. And then only one size had has the 3 8 filler rod in there. <laughs> just sticking out of a weld puddle. Wow. There's so many cracked welds in this thing. It's got rebar here holding the fender. And the other side is square tubing. So we had an epiphany. The air tank in the trunk wasn't because the tire would go down. It's for the airbags. Let's see if they go up. Put it in burnout mode. Lift the front axle off the ground. It's going up. I have no idea how much to put in. Until it blows up. Let's go watch this thing. <laughs>
Is this the same car? Like it went from shitty beat up limo to, oh shit. Someone's pimping a golden white limo. Where's the spinners, dog? You can't lose with 22s. Bars full of water. Oh, is it? <laughs> It's all humid in here because there's so many leaks. And I had to turn the frost on and now I'm cooking. I can't get the window down. Anyway, we're gonna take this big beautiful marshmallow looking bastard back to the shop and start cleaning the interior. Oh, yes, yes! I'm gonna live! <laughs> I didn't move forward at all. <laughs> okay, you really can't see. We're gonna die! Oh my God, we live. We're doing 50 down the highway like the Discovery re-entering the atmosphere. Oh boy! Uh... Put your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. All right, let's see if the brakes still work. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Yep, they do. You're welcome. I saved your life. All right, obviously the first thing we need to test is will this thing burn off a set of tires? I'm not gonna go for two because there's about 30 foot of drive shaft when you come to the floor. Axle, 35 and a half foot burnout. Look at that. All right, let's get the hell out of here before that hits town. <laughs> Back to the shop. Now we're gonna see if this fits in the garage. Shop to this side of the shop now. Okay, so it's time for day two. Today we're gonna try to get this son bitch cleaned up, looking nice, get everything working inside, see if we can fix the stereo systems, the subwoofer, you know, all the essential items. Oh, and like tires and a fuel gauge, but whatever. Everything's just gross, <laughs> for lack of better words. Oh, it smells like mouse shit and burnt rubber now. <laughs> we somehow made it worse. Floors are pretty dirty. Uh, the bar's covered in mouse poop. TVs and everything are all nasty. This area back here is really something special. We got these poop-covered pillows or whatever this is, and literally the bloody handprint. So, uh, yeah. The real damage is up here. Bunch of crap on the floor. Mouse nest in there. Just stuff all over the seats. So yeah, we got our work cut out for us. Gonna bust out the, all the D-germ. <laughs> the shop backs 
and the rug doctors and just dive in. And I'm sure this is pretty much going to be the entirety of today's cleaning this interior because there is a lot of interior to clean. The adventure begins. To get all the mouse shit smell out, we got to get all the mouse shit out, which means we got to get the seats out. And, well, they're not really bolted down or anything, so... They're literally just sitting here. The hardest one was the rear seat because it was using factory Ford mounts and they had little clips. That is used wood. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, limos and conversion vans are just built out of just scrap stuff. Like, that is nailed together. Those ones are nails? I got screws over here. In it's shinned one. up with scraps of wood. Yeah, we got screws, nails, screws... Nails, I can't see the last one. Last one's screws. Oh, but that And a big self-tapper. <laughs> Just built out of random bullshit. So under the seat, we have a bunch more scrap wood. But we also have this. Just kind of tucked in here and upside down from Turk Technologies in, let's see, what year was it? 1994. And Kevin, what do we think this is? Oh, he's gone. Yeah, so that antenna is for the phones. And there's that type of cord running to each one, but I think the phones have been replaced because they're not plugged in. And there's just random wires, like the phones aren't wired right, they just hooked up the, the signal wires and didn't put power to them. So we need to figure out what's going on there. The radios last night were cutting out when we were riding around town, because of course when you own a limo you gotta ride around town for a long time. And I figured out what it was, it's the batteries are like in parallel, but there's a solenoid in between them that attaches in a basically an X where the left battery powers the accessories, the right battery powers all the operations for the car part of it, and then the alternator goes to the solenoid over to the right battery because it's wired to that side of the solenoid. When you turn the key, that solenoid is supposed to close and connect both batteries, but if the solenoid doesn't work, it doesn't charge the accessory battery. So our accessory battery actually was dead, and everything here quit working properly. So I need to get a new solenoid for that, and then we should have working radios and stuff again. Uh, we also have a big ceiling boob right here we should probably do something about. So far I found a quarter, a dime, and a penny. How about you? I found a few dead mice. Um, there was a ring. What? There was a ring pop. Um, what? <laughs> I was looking here at how to clean these carpets, and I figured the best way is just to take them out. If you come around here, you'll notice when you pull them out, they're installed with duct tape. As a binding agent and a spacer. <laughs> I am like really concerned now. Dude, this thing is just slapped together. So save that because we'll need it for a template. Or just make a stop no, sign. Stop sign. <laughs> Let's just use stop signs. It'll be stronger. It'll add to the structural integrity of the car. I think we found a way we can attach the bar better. Oh, just, yeah, just actually. That. Actually, I think it was at one time. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was right there. It broke off underneath the duct tape. That moved a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we even push it back that far? No. <sighs> hmm. Okay. Well, duly noted. Clean it under the seat. I found a card. It's the Prairie Gold Club. Someone was. Someone was living large. They're straight pimping in the limo, like we're gonna be. We should get an original Xbox. Hook them up to this like eight inch RCA TV and have a Halo tournament in the limo. Dude, these cups are fancier than any cups I own. Should we just take them home and use them and leave more room for beers? Well, I mean, these three over here don't match. Is there? Well, that's just for the front bar. Front bar special. What's going on with that one? Did someone pour something in there before it was parked? Everything's fine except for this one. It's just disgusting. All right, it's time to kill the uh, all the AIDS and STDs in this car. No. So obviously we got the uh, D-germ out, which literally kills AIDS and STDs. <laughs> this stuff's amazing. And what doesn't it work on? I don't know. Yeah, so Jesse's gonna spend some good quality time with this, and then we'll put them back in the really dark limo where you can't see how dirty they are. That's probably for the better. Cause... Yeah, like I didn't think they were this bad. This is. This is that's, like the same as that. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go uh, yeah. soak the entire interior down in this and let it sit. You so might as well just close the doors and start pouring it in. Just, I just put a grenade in here. Just boom. <laughs> I did the dishes. <laughs> Love to see John in a tuxedo shirt serving drinks out of this thing. <laughs> oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. 
This is John, Golden Rustin. Ah, yeah. I uh, shaved the mullet and cut the mustache off, and I'm sad about it, all right? I'm it not was, happy. It was for a good reason. He's graduated college, and he was going to get a job as a police officer, in which you can't have mullets and stuff. So he went and applied for the job, and, and unfortunately, they, uh, they declined him, so he shaved it for nothing. He shaved it all for nothing. So if you want the mullet back, support me so I can bring my goddamn mullet back because I miss it. Golden Ruster but <laughs> go subscribe. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna pull this blanket out now. It is full of mouse poop. I wonder if I can roll it in on itself as a big mouse poop container. I think it's more than mouse poop. Yeah. We should just burn it inside the car. Just burn the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, throw these away forever. So that's the last section of the car internally that needs vacuumed, and then it's just the trunk. I went through and emptied about a half a bottle of D-Germ into the entire interior, floors, walls, ceilings, all of it, on the front half, and it already smells better. It might just be suppressed by the smell of denatured alcohol and blue coloring or whatever's in that magical stuff. But it's getting to be like a good mix of like stink and stank. Stink and stank, and you know, you know, you're doing good when you come out and you're a little lightheaded. We're gonna keep vacuuming and shampooing and scrubbing and cleaning and get this thing ready to roll so we can go play with it. Mm -hmm. While playing with these phones, I found a loose wire and reconnected it. And then looking at it, I saw this one back here has got a light and more wires. And then I realized you can do this. Anytime now. You can, there we go. And those are batteries, which means this is actually a battery operated phone. Someone replaced it. We're starting to think that uh, someone might have updated this interior in like mid 90s because of that uh, cell receiver thing we found up there and I think these TVs are newer than like the 1985 TV back there and these are not the original phones plus these speakers and uh, all the speakers and stuff were put in because there weren't CDs in 1985 or 86 so I'm gonna replace these batteries and reconnect that wire again and see if we can get this thing to work okay I have a light let's see if they work Hello? Holy crap, these freaking work. Hey, can we go to McDonald's? All right, it's been a couple days. We're finishing up the limo's interior cleanliness right now. Uh, it took like three or four days to clean all that interior to an okay level. These came out okay. The front came out meh. And the rear came out okay, I guess. But it's okay because these turned out great. Oh, that's good. <laughs> The goal was mostly to get the smell out of the car by removing as much poop as we could, which we definitely removed as much poop as we could. I pulled a uh, giant, and I mean giant, mouse nest out of the headliner right there. It was about two feet wide, about eight inches deep, and the bottom was just one inch of crusted poop. It filled the shot back like three times. So that was that was a big source of stink in here. So getting that out made a difference. It is definitely like completely different smell in here. It still stinks. It still smells like mice. Yeah, it's it's still really bad. I'm gonna pop these tires off quick. Uh, and then we're gonna take these down to Trickles, get ourselves some new tires with good old white walls mounted up so we can drive down the road smooth. What's wrong, Mook? Well, it seems like you bought out the entire tire store. <laughs> it's it just for the limo. Six, get six free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Is there any left in Ames? No. <laughs> We kept the old ones because they're like brand new tires. They're a uh, date code of 2002. So someone got this out, put a fuel pump in it, put tires on it, did an oil change, and then it got parked again. So that's why the tires are so new. But let's get these on and go for a drive. See if we fix our vibration issue. I'm going to say we have simply from the fact that as soon as we let all the air on the old tires, they all did that. They bubbled out and then you can see all the flat spots in them. So, uh, yeah, that was probably wildly out of round. All right, so we got tires. We got everything cleaned out. We're still working on the electrical ground ones up front. But one of the uh, last absolutely crucial things that we have to do before we can go drive this today is to throw this Rockford Fosgate amp away. That's going to go in the trash. We went down to Walmart and picked up their 1,000-watt Jensen uh, amp and hooked it up, and it works, and it bumps pretty good. We ran it bridged. I, uh, I used to dabble in audio in high school. I really enjoyed it, actually. It was a lot of fun. 
Anywho, I'm gonna self tapper this shit to this wall, and we're gonna be bumping and pimping our way through town. Insert royalty free music. Forgot about that. We gotta fix that. But besides that, that's pretty much everything to put this thing on the road. New tires, spend about a week cleaning it, fix a couple electrical gremlins, fix the 12 inch sub in the rear so we can be bumping. And now it's time to figure out what the hell you do when you have a 35 and a half foot limo. Tomorrow's mom's birthday, and we could definitely embarrass her by parading her around town in a 35 foot limo, but you also have to move north, right? Ready to move home? Yeah. Get on in there. Welcome to the team. Wear that. Oh, God. Hey, Mook. Oh, yeah. You know what? It's not like we have 12 trucks. Might as well move home in a limo. <laughs> Jeez, Jesse, you get a big enough fridge. You gotta get a whole limo to move you home. All right, now I'll head home and get Mom for her birthday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin our tour of Iowa State University. And on your right, you'll see Lake Laverne. We will now travel down past the Memorial Union, up to the center of campus on our 35 and a half foot limo of Duke. Oh, we are the length of a bus. Don't worry, everyone, we're just taking Jesse home. He's, he's not important. We just have a limo. One time I had a class to the left. That's where I met John. He built the bus, bus come back. People on the left. Oh, I have to talk to my mom. We'll now hang a right and head to the pretty court on our way out of town to Highway 69 to get some gasoline. We'll see you then. Thank you. Also, it looked like you were just talking to yourself the whole time. And you're probably going to get pulled over for not being hands-free. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this nerd thinking that he can just talk on a landline-looking phone while he's driving a 35 and a half foot car? No, uh the Beatles are coming for you, son. I smell brakes. Do you smell brakes? Yes. I do. Oh, we're gonna die. Alright, we definitely smell brakes. I want to say it's this one. It's that one. <laughs> Must have a stuck caliper or something. <laughs> yeah! This is the car we get most recognized in. What the hell? Anyway. We're gonna take the highway easy all the way home, just keep throwing water on this now and then, try to shock that caliber back out. It's probably just a sticking piston that's finally moved or something. I'm sure it'll be okay. This can't end detrimentally. Wait, what happens if you gotta tow a limo, actually? Do you leave it? That's a house now? Think cooling thoughts. You're a cold brake caliper, not one on fire. Everything's fine. Okay, now we just hit the highway and don't use the brakes for the next 50 miles to we're home and hope that it just cools with the wind and frees up. Not gonna happen, but a guy can dream. All right, Penguin Squad, roll out. So our brakes have freed up a bit, hopefully. There's a lot less smoking and there's a dust devil over there. <laughs> Five foot limos are great for moving people home. It makes a great truck. We are now going to get this cleaned out, head back to the homestead, and pick mom up for her birthday. She has no idea. It's gonna be embarrassing. We're gonna love it. Mama Brown Brown. Back to the old homestead. All we gotta do is show up and wait for mom's reaction to be like, oh, you that ugly son of a big. That is not sitting in my yard. That's what I'm calling it. That's what it's gonna be. 
I called it. <laughs> Happy birthday! Happy birthday, <laughs> Mom! Oh Your my show gosh, first. that thing is huge! The chauffeur <laughs> crew is here. Thank you! She is the favorite child. I love the yep. shirts. Not even that. <laughs> you hi, guys, Mom, it's hi. me. <laughs> I'm your son. Hi, Kevin, I love the shirts. Hi, Jesse. Oh my God, I got recognized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I cleared this big parking lot out for you. Yeah, it broke down. It has to stay there, though. Nope. You well, let's guys. wait for everyone to get here, and then we'll go for a There's little party. There's four people. <laughs> well, Dad. Okay, well, he's just gone for a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Back. There's like 20 people showing up. Yeah, there's like 47 people. I hope you had that thing full of food, because we're oh, going right. to need it. Okay. We've been wined and dined. Everyone else has. The time is here to fill this thing with people. Uh, the 35-foot limo is crewed by a team of three. The driver, the loader, and the communication specialist. Let's start piling the old people in. Everyone say hi. Hi. Hello. Happy birthday, Mom. Hey, thanks. This is a great birthday. So far, Mom's birthday has been a great success. So birthdays are something you can do on a whim anytime if you daily a 35-foot limo. How many people are in this thing? Uh, we have 17 people in this right now. <laughs> so we planned on six. I don't know what happened. Yeah, somehow the three of us yeah, ended like up that. here. That's a nice boating effect. I think <laughs> limos are a like, people kind of though. Yeah, that's true. Between the air pressure. <laughs> After mom's birthday, we loaded up all of my friends into the limo, got one of our professors to drive, and took that son of a gun to graduation. Kevin Joseph Brown. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any footage that day, but I do have some pictures to remember the occasion. I'm also proud to announce to you guys that I will be doing YouTube full-time for a career, so hopefully now that I have a little extra time with college out of the way, we should see a boost in content, both quality and craziness. Since then, the limo has pretty much been sitting in the backyard, mainly because it's kind of logistically hard to shuffle around a 35 and a half foot car. However, it does get used often by my cousin because they think it is hilarious. In fact, on the last day of school, they dropped off and picked up their kids in the limo. Last day of school! Yes! <laughs> All right, let's take a quick jump forward in time a few weeks to after graduation, which is what you just saw. Because of graduation, all my friends graduated and left town, so now I'm the only wrench at the shop, which means things are getting done half as fast as they did when we had Angus here. Which means, in turn, I haven't had all the time to do the fun, goofy stuff we were going to do with this car. That does not mean we're done with this car. And the reason I'm actually ending this video right here is because of what we're doing next with this car. Oh yeah, we're going to put 35 pounds of nitrous in this limo. I made a call to Nitrous Express and they sent us a bunch of stuff to make it happen. So huge thanks to them in advance. Make sure you guys are here for that video in a couple weeks once we get that done. I know basically nothing about these systems, so I have a little learning to do. I promise you guys, if we got a million views, we would do an LS swap with the turbo. Uh, we did get a million views in no time, but we are slowly going to work up to that LS swap if we even get there uh, with some other fun, dumb stuff we have in mind. Keep in mind, this thing has like 900 drive shafts in the construction of something you make out of old pallets. Oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> So with that being said, if you guys like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you right here next week on Junkyard Digs. Follow our friends, Junkyard Mook, and turn the bell on so you can keep up with the chaos. We'll see you next time. Peace. Probably about to be in pieces, actually.